connected. Channel switched. Yo, user. Mr. Voodoo. Dude. I got a new name for your yeah, flight light. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. It's not mine. It's FGUK's, man, but lay it on me. Midpoint was a... Was a opportunity for training so uh, I don't want you to change it but uh, destruction and mayhem comes to mind <laughs> yeah, flight nights are that way sometimes oops no problem I just it was a it was a challenge I wrecked a bunch of planes up there Mid, mid points a pain in the ass to get down on you gotta come in slow and you gotta be ready to go, man. But you got the right aircraft for it. You got the air here, so. Well, this is what I settled on. Because I landed this one twice without crashing. What did you wreck? The F4. The 18. What else? Oh, the F4. Is, uh, F4 is never going to be. Well, I I did land there with it. It just I couldn't do it more than once. <laughs> I mean, once at a setting. Because I landed there several times with it. It just I couldn't do it twice. At, you know, at the same time. Oh. You had to go you know, around the same. first time. Yeah, yeah, around and around and around, and then I kind of figured out hopefully what I need to do. But we'll see. Destruction and mayhem. Yeah, our final airport, if you spawn there, you have to spawn on the runway because if you don't, you'll never move again. I have to put it in full afterburner to get the, to get it to move. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, well, the F4 was good because it has reverse thrust and heck, you could back up. <laughs> but either way you land, you're going to go right off the end of it if you ain't careful. The Valley of Pylon, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's not the place to go off the runway either. No. <laughs> so, I wrecked four or five planes up there. <laughs> <laughs> trying to land. Stuart will send you the bill. <laughs> okay. I'm not ashamed to say it. Oh, no. that's um, It was a long time ago we had um, somebody that was we used to use the uh, EGOD uh, Echo Echo Golf Oscar Delta as our main airport and um, somebody had been practicing there or whatever and Stuart was joking and said yeah we'll send you the, the runway fees for landing oh I, I didn't know I had to pay for that oh yeah you do so he was freaked yeah, yeah. out he was like come oh, man yeah checks in the mail <laughs> question, question for you all on the uh Hood for the areas. There's a scale, vertical scale on the right hand side, small numbers two, three, four, five, six. What's that represented? Oh, I've never seen it. I've never looked. The thrust vector. Um, no, there's a, there's a dial on the cockpit panel for the thrust angle. Oh, are you talking about the little, the little one up towards the up towards the canopy? Yeah, on the head up display, it's you know invisible with just green text. There's uh, two scales, one on the left hand side, which is uh, speed, and the one on the right hand side is small numbers two, three, four, five, six. But I can't work out what it is, but the numbers above are the height. So you got oh. height above sea level and uh, physical height. Oh, so I'm I never. Trying try to figure out what it means. I never figured that out either. I had a look on uh, the internet, and but the only one that comes up is uh, DCS, and it's totally different because it's the American version of the area, and it's probably got a different head-up display, which is totally different to the one in the uh, our model. Yeah, there's other planes that have that too, but I never, 
I never figured out what it was either. It just sits and goes round and round and round and round. <laughs> anyway, I managed to not fall to asleep this tea time, so I'm here. Two weeks running, I were watching TV and having a coffee, and the next news I looked up, it was eight o'clock. Voodoo, you'll have to work on the ejection seat for your F-35. When the <laughs> aircraft decides you're flying it badly, it just spits you out. Yeah, you're you're going to die. Get out. Sorry, say that again. So you're you're going to die. Get out. Yeah, well, it's meant to do it automatically, and it senses, and it's meant to do it that fast it's before you can even realise there's something going to go wrong. My uh, nephew was a uh, uh, crew chief mechanic on the F-35B in the Marines. Yeah, I think they were saying the other day that in the UK they may have now like a dedicate. In the past they were sharing the areas between the air combined in them like a combined force between the RF and the Navy so they would be on the ground certain part of the year then other parts of the year they'd be on the ship but I think now they've got to the stage where they've got enough aircraft that the RF have got the uh, their own aircraft which might not be you know go on aircraft carriers Voodoo, which runway are we setting off from? Uh, 17, sir. User joined your channel. User!
user joined your channel. User. Someone in front of me. <laughs> There's just a pilot on, on his own. It's, it's the Phantom. Really? That's fine. But it, it's filled itself in now. But his parachute came out.
guess the Orby ain't coming back. Anyway, here's your brief. The weather is uh, core high pressure. Time is noon. Initially, we're gonna, this is a long runway as somebody else already pointed out, so. You get cooking, uh, target speed is 420 knots, 420 knots indicated. We'll be traveling the first part of this at a thousand feet AGL. Um, you can fly it manually, or if you trust your terrain following radar, um, AGL hole. Use that. I'll be using that until we get into some the weird terrain, and then I'm going to have to go manual. So eventually, we get into the really bad ter territory here. We're going to go to 13,500 feet, and uh, that will be our target altitude when we leave the deck. Go for it. Here we go. for me for the turn GPS FMS 347 mark Okay, I also has to come in an echo if I don't have installed. What's that? Parky also got, has fixed an aircraft. I haven't got it installed. I should have that and I don't have it either, so it won't keep up anyway, so. We have done stuff with large transports, but I don't know if that would take away. Here's our... Boink. Boink! Why is your Globemaster not in my, my repertoire? No, oh dear. CFG UK one. Hmm. It won't keep up anyway. Yes, yes. you will. <laughs> Okay. If I can get it to move. <laughs> Let me 
hit five. Fourteen seconds from our first waypoint. You must have some moles in America. These are molehills that must fly oh, over the top of. Oh. <laughs> Aren't they weird? He's bloody disappeared now. We're gonna install the C17. You wanted to make a bloody change, didn't you? No, I'm just saying, I hadn't got it, so I've gone and installed it so it would show up and... Uh, it's an FGUK one. I've, I've got it, but I haven't got it in my actual flying directory. Yeah, I've got it too, but it showed up as yellow, I don't know why. I don't have the time to reload it right now. Balls don't bother. I'm going to go EF2000. Roger that. on this one. Ooh, some red stone, red rocks over there. Looks like blood in the sand. That's pretty cool. GR2 in a tight turn. Bleeds a lot of speed. Yeah, but you see a lot of the thing is it's cool. It's like you got the tip trails and that stuff showing over MP, which is cool. This is where the, uh, well, this airfield we're just over flying, this is the one where the, uh, if you search for kitty, helicopter practicing, so it's all got inflatable things to practice flying round. Cool. It's an old, uh, it's that French guy, uh, uh, it's on his site, but it's all inflatable donuts and... Yeah, yeah. You Jack Cousteau. No, not him. Oh, Behringer. 
it's Kitty or something like that. The uh... hello, Kitty. <laughs> I love that stuff. I, I mean, on somebody else. No, I'm actually talking to my <laughs> pussy. <laughs> oh, why would today be different? All these round fields are there for the aliens to land on. That's good. That would be crop circles. This is why they got no water in the cities in California. It's a fact. seconds from the left turn. Yeah, one of our Northern Ireland comedians did a program about the water supply going into Los Angeles. I think his granddad worked on it in the good way back beyond. But they did one of these gravity pipes all the way from where the, there was a lake somewhere, all the way into Los Angeles without any pumping. But what he did is it drew this place where the water came from it just turned into a ghost town because it's just a, a salt lake now. Yeah, it's uh, they were trying to get think about uh, building a big pipeline to the Mississippi where I live and piping water out of that out west. Yeah, well, there is some good stuff in the. Uh, you know, the olden days. Climate change, which is not real, is wreaking havoc on the west coast of the U.S. anyway. Other places about the world, but, you know, it's not a real thing, so... You know, that sound bug sounds weird. Some of these aircrafts are like, <laughs> Awesome. Target speed's 420 knots, Orby.
climbing under autopilot to 13,500 feet. Did everybody manage to get the download? Because it was a bit of a big one. It was awesome. Took a uh, few hours to compile. I think it took about about hours six, six minutes to download it. That was surprising. Well, it took me a lot longer than that to copy it from my old PC onto my new PC so I could upload it to uh, Google. Can't remember the password to do it on my old machine. I still need to copy it onto my new PC so I can see it myself. Oops, my series decided to get stupid. Uh oh, that's what happened last time. No, this is just disappearing. It's not like got square clouds and shit like that. Or maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm just crusting here. Never mind. Never mind, I I'm okay. It's weird, isn't it, when the plane in front of you goes low, it looks like they've got to crash into the ground. If you're slightly above them. Level of 13.5, admire the scenery. This is some good looking stuff through here, boys. Except for that big light. Damn it! That pisses me off. GR2 going past me there. Woohoo! Yeah, I would imagine that they didn't fly uh, phantoms that low to, to the ground in the when they were being used. They did in Vietnam. Wow, well, they were them. FGR2s, but uh, F4 variants. Well, they've been an eye up with the protecting the bombers. Uh, now they just use them for uh, ground support at times. I'm locked up. Sorry about that. Damn it. You must be back, you just whiz, whiz past me. Yeah, I hit the accelerated time to get back where I'm supposed to be. That I don't know why it does that, but you get, it's, it's one of those, the plagues of flight night. It's like, people are trying to follow you. Great, so you lagged out for five seconds. <laughs> Gary used to bitch about it all the time. Damn it, boo, it's not my fault, I can't help it, I can't, I, I'm sorry. Like that, do it again, damn it. Ooh, I hope your scenery looks good as mine does. This looks great in here. Okay. 
the interesting thing is I had uh, uh, orthographic scenery from a previous flight which we ran in this area and the latest download looks better so it seems to be progressing in some way. Well, we have done flights in this area, haven't we, before? Oh, yeah, close. Maybe it's from a different source, you know, if these, the previous ones were done a couple of years ago, they might have come from a different uh, repository of uh, images. Or they might have upgraded the resolution of them. Because on Google Earth you have like a slider bar where you can slide back in time and see the previous satellite pictures. You know, to show when buildings have been added and moved and stuff. That looks like a Russian livery on your F-35A. Oh, yeah. it's, a, it's a fantasy Cuban livery, actually. Oh, it right. actually exists. I just need to because I think it's a little easier to spot, but I could be wrong. Hey, watch this group of peaks we're coming up on. You might need to bump up just to get over it a little bit. takes the more pragmatic approach and goes, I'm not bad, I'm going up here. Ooh, turbulence over the hills. That's one that's always amused me. How does the USA manage to have a prison in Cuba? How the hell did that come about? God knows. It's in Gitmo. It's a naval base. Guantanamo Bay. Alright, back down on the deck, chickens. I thought you was mortal enemies with Cuba. They've always had a base in Cuba, though. Yeah, I think way it goes. It, it, way I think back. It's least. This looks cool with the little city there and stuff in the roads. This is awesome.
Yeah, the only thing that lets the scenery down is the flight gear's depiction of rivers. Yeah. Don't well, seem to be as good as the, the photo scenery. And when it all goes uh, orthographic, I suppose that will re resolve itself. Or maybe not. We've got an F-14B joining us. Yay. Supposed to be defending their airspace. Well, when I was running this stuff down, I had uh, a lot of people hanging out. So I, I think a lot of people fly out of California. Uh, San Francisco used to be the, uh, the default uh, airport. Plus, anytime you see a huge concentration of aircraft, if you're not used to that, you're like, hey, what's going on? Trouble is, I won't know who we are. We won't have team speak. Back in the day, I've crashed many aircraft trying to communicate with people by type and fly, and I just don't do it. I don't even look at the, the text thing. Yeah, I don't. I don't have time sometimes. See, it's like it's so weird to like get into conversations when I'm scoping this stuff out, and there'd be people who've been yammering at me for the whole time. I'd say, look, I just don't see it. I'm busy doing this stuff. I'm not trying to be mean. Anti-social, I guess. perspective. I fly my aircraft by watching this. <laughs> oh, this is where Stuart uses those weird things. We go left turn to the next waypoint. Yeah, I just figured out what the vertical uh, scale is on the hood, on the area. It's uh, it's altitude. Ah. So you know, you get like a gives you a readout at the top saying what the actual 
altitude is and what the height above sea level, uh, uh, height above ground is. But then it's like you know, so, so right now it's nine thousand, so it should be reading nine scale what moves up and down. Yeah, after this waypoint of S-O-N-N-Y, we have dudes, D-U-D-E-S, <laughs> which is appropriate for being out west, I suppose. Damn it. Jesus, how much did I lose that time?
Oh, that's it for me. Shit. Meet you at the midpoint. Somebody tried to get you guys there. All my feelings and my power deep inside. My heart beats crash in my blood and my veins. The water is turning red. I don't want to be like a pair on my knees. Buried in the shelter of the night. Water, have you got the root for your the lead now? Yes, I have. Um, magnetic heading 291. Thirty-four miles to do it. I stayed around twelve thousand feet now instead of falling in the hill. Yeah, I don't trust the autopilot when you go in. It's alright going up the hills, but it's when it decides to go down the valley on the other side, <laughs> it doesn't know there's an hill or following it. Plus, I find that most of them with terrain following, after a while they start to lose it. I don't know why. You have to refresh the, uh, go into the stuff and redo your, uh, your autopilot, refresh the autopilot. I'm listening to a podcast this morning. It's about it's called Cautionary Tales, the pod series, and it was one about uh, AI and pilots getting too reliant on the computer, the Airbuses doing all the work for them. The Airbus, which were flying from uh, South America to Paris. The uh, two junior pilots had four minutes of stall warnings and totally ignored it. Because ah. they are so used to flying the Airbus where it would never stall. Because the autopilot would not allow you to stall it. And because all the sensors had iced up, it was stalling. And I haven't watched the end of it, but listened to the end of it. But they were flying high and start, you know, stalling all the time, and that's probably dropped out of the sky eventually. That terrain following radar made for the TSR two was quite quite magic, wasn't it? Yeah, I found a book on that as well. I think they built a lot of it into Tornado eventually, didn't they? Apparently so. The computer that did down the TSR2 is about the size of a small engine. In fact, a medium shed. Massive. Probably why the TS2 was so, such a large aircraft anyway. Yeah, just to carry the computer for the uh, train following radar. Okay, we're about six miles from Dudes now. The next turning point will slide right after that. Doing on this program, it, it brings all yeah, sorts. Turn, turning right now, about 15 degrees return. Anyway, on this podcast, it brings in all sorts of side issues. And they were saying they've been doing 
scientific tests on the uh, the ability of AI, whether it's beneficial or not. And there's a lot of cases where people have using AI just don't do as well as humans on their own. Okay, the next waypoint is Cape Blue, which is the midpoint um, landing, I reckon. Uh, 6,000 feet below us, so we're going to drop down a, a bit here. We drop down 3,000 feet to start with, down to 9,000. So now we get on from there. I thought it went very quiet then. I've run out of fuel. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. I've got high frame rates, but for some reason I keep getting these lags that are... I don't know what it is. It's happening to me too, Voodoo. Oh, well, it's like... Ta-da! Yep. Something about the scenery, I think. I don't think so. I I don't know. I've flown this a couple times. Didn't have the legs. It's that's probably the predominance of aircraft. Once the more air, I've noticed that if I watch my lag settings, the more aircraft show up, the, the greater lag I have. Yeah. Well, there's uh, Golf Hub is in a not an FG aircraft, and there's the F-14B as well. So. Okay, drop it down another couple of thousand feet. This is where the fun begins. So the um, Midway Airport is about um, seven miles straight ahead. You can come in straight if you want, even though it's um, downwind. You decide. Away you go. Voodoo, that's one thing I've not managed to be able to do with the 35B is to get it to go to other. It'll do it, but you can't, you have to reduce the fuel load to below one half and play with it, jiggle it. Yeah, I think the area is a little bit better on the vertical VTOL.
managed to hover it and fly very, very slow and stuff like that with uh, by converting from, you know, when you're already at altitude, but doing it from the ground User is like STOL it does. Um, take off vertically, it ain't gonna happen. Yeah, I would have picked a different airport, but there's no <laughs> the right one. That's the challenge. Boy, they. Guys with Harrier should have this down. <laughs> you pull the kibosh on it now. Yeah, I've ruined not, it. Not me. I'll be lucky if I get on the ground. Oh, you can get on the ground. Well, on wheels. It's walking away from it that gets to be difficult. Yeah. Yeah, way fast, bro. But you learn, you learn that stuff. What's a windsock look like? Is it flat or has it got wind in it? It'll be, uh, was it three knots from 150 it's, degrees? It's got a little wind, but it ain't no big deal. Land any way you want to. Don't want to crash into nobody, but I'll try this way. Ooh, he's nice and slow. right in November 66. Well, Eagle's got it figured out. Nope. Uh-oh. There you go. Too much angle. Go around, oh, try right again. There. There's Eagle, there's Eagle. Eagle's got it. Eagle's got it. Did you pop your speed brakes? I didn't see him come up, Eagle.
<laughs> oh, you're okay. You're okay. This is like landing on an aircraft carrier. No, it's worse. That's, That's easier. easier. I was going to say, aircraft carrier is easy. It's got wires to grab you. Okay, Twinkie, tell me. Now I got room. Wow, there's like a giant skyscraper out there in the middle of the landscape. Just one. I'm thinking that's not really there. Ollie's just practicing his hover. Good job. Or slow speed flying. There you go. Saw your life pass Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Makes for good video, bro. Good, daddy. Good way to wake you up. The only thing good about crashing out is I can shoot video from everybody else's perspective. There you go. There you go, Eagle. Now you got it figured out. Shoot as soon as you hit the ground. Hit D. Full break. <laughs> sure. So run me over. It's okay. You got it stopped, Rogue. Well done. <laughs> I don't know why your parachute's going straight up in the air, but it is. You're the last one, Ollie. There you go. No pressure. No dude, pressure. But... <laughs> Just because everybody's watching, yeah? Take your time. The 
Look at you, silly boy. Good job. Woo! Yeah. Wheels down, cockpit up. Good stuff. All right, everybody's down. Short break. We'll resume this mess. The second half shouldn't be near as hard and weird. Weren't so much destruction as there was but mayhem. mayhem. <laughs> well, it's flight night for you. Well, that's, that's why I, I like, like it. it. They used to say, what's the worst that can happen? Don't ask. You got no idea. I'll be back.
See how we're going to do this instead of like lining up on the runway? Just come down the taxiway and turn left and turn left and go for it. Makes sense, you guys? Yep. I'll keep the speed down so we can all get formed up. First GPS FMS heading is uh, 325 degrees. Go ahead, Mr. Holly. I'll bring up the drag. And of course, our first waypoint is Ewoks. <laughs> I struggle with the taxi. This went off the cliff there to go into <laughs> all the mode. Oh my. Can you get back or are you going to have to respawn? No, I'm flying now, but I have to uh, <laughs> turn into an helicopter. <laughs> All right, kids. The situation. Here we go. Didn't think I was going to make it. User joined your channel. Speed down around 300 knots. I'm gonna stay level at about 7,000 feet. You guys are up. Seven thousand feet. Uh, I'm at three hundred knots. Sing out when you get caught up, and we'll we'll go back to four two zero knots. Present heading is 324, sir.
Morty's perspective, I see four aircraft. Five aircraft, five aircraft. How did Flash get on landing? I didn't hear anybody shout his name. Say again? How did Flash get on landing at the midpoint? Um, I think he got down, but he ran over the doohickey. Down the hill. Later, Orby. Thanks for coming, man. User left your channel. Going 420 knots, my mark, stand by. 420 knots, my, my mark, stand by. Mark accelerating to 420 knots. I'm staying at 7,000 feet for now. TPS FMS is 324 degrees. Form up. Flies a lot better if you close the air, the air brakes. <laughs> Sometimes they do. Whoa. Whoa. I just went under Orby or Wardy, I think. I think Orby's gone. I think it was Wardy that I went under, but I'm not sure. Does Wardy and Flash are the gliders to me because I didn't, don't have them. The Europe pointer. Yeah, I see that, but I don't fly it, so I don't have it, but I need to go get it. Yeah, when you have more time. <laughs> yeah. Well, when we get done, I'll go get it. That and the javelin. If you bring up the pilot's list on the multiplayer, you can put an X in the ignore button. And it disappears then if it's coming through as a glider. Oh, it's alright, I don't mind them. Well, if they managed to land uh, the Phantoms on top of that hilltop, they did bloody well. Skill, man, skill. Because what would they normally need? Something like a bit 3,000 oh, yards? They, a long one because they weren't. I mean, that's why they got shoots and stuff. Well, jet fighters, when you see them in, in the flesh at the museum, they're bloody ginormous, aren't they? Oh, yeah. It's like the tornado, it carries the same amount of bombs as the Lancaster bomber did in Second World War. Oh, isn't that amazing? First year, first air show I went to and saw an F-22, I was like, are you kidding me right now? This thing's huge.
God knows what a, a B-52 looks like in the flesh. I don't think I've seen one. one at Fairford. Yeah. They're ridiculously big. Well, well, there's six or eight engines and the wings sort of droop on their own. Back on train following here for a bit. Or not, it's decided to take me up the stupid bill, so we're gonna go to 9,000 feet. Target altitude is now 9,000 feet, 420 knots. Current heading 324 degrees, GPS FMS. Passed a couple of pretty good sized mountains on this, uh, on this trip, this second half. One of them sort of real video things that come up on Facebook. It was a fire bombing. It was a um, TriStar or, a, you know, with, with the air, the engine in the tailplane, free engine, and it's flying between the mountains, fire bombing uh, orange water. Very close to the ground. <laughs> I don't expect to see an airliner that close to the ground. The other one was the, the I think it was either the Army or the Navy Lynx display team and it was doing rolls and loops and everything with Lynx. aircraft I'm, gonna, I'm trying to get permission to uh, release and fly gear. One of them's the old uh, PBY. I want to get some uh, sea, sea aircraft, seaplanes back in uh, flight gear. Seems to be ignored, but I got a really cool a PBY and a PBM. Both which are really cool. Um, or I think they are anyway. I'm trying to get permission from the auth original authors to turn them loose under flight gear, but I have more people ignore me than I do have tell me no. I mean, you just never hear, you don't know. Should be like a time limit on them, you know, after so many years since it was, if they were like uh, FWX and stuff, then after 10 years it should become public. Yeah, as soon as, well, I would agree with that. I don't think that's the way it is, though. I mean, if they don't want people to use them, they should just take them down. Well, a lot of them are put up that I find up are put up by, uh, they were payware at one time and they've since outlived their, their usefulness and they end up on places like Flyaway Simulation. And I mean, you can download them and use them for free, but redoing them you kind of you know kind of need permission on some of these so. i like the guys who just list them like that uh the f4u that i put up the original author just says you can do what you want with it but you can't sell it for money you can't make, i'm i'm that's the way i am you know, yeah if i'm making money i cut you in but if it's just for like open source or something you know it's better there than with boneyard They're really awkward ones to come up when somebody dies. Because if you haven't given permission to be distributed, it's impossible 
use it. Yep. Yeah, there was that uh, site, I just don't think it's to exist, UK Mill, they used to have loads and loads of aircraft and a lot of liveries and stuff and some of their authors had died. It's nice to see people flying like they stole them. I ain't good enough to do that yet. You'll get there. Next waypoint, M-A-I-D-N, Maiden. <laughs> Six minutes, 48 seconds. You guys got an eyeball on me, so I killed the smoke. But if you need need visual reference, just yell. I'll get it up.
Stewart say he was uh, making a try to update the uh, the Eurofighter? I thought he did. I could be wrong. I don't remember that. A serious challenge if he does. Yeah, LG had his own way of doing stuff. I guess the coding's pretty weird. I I looked at it one time trying to fix something and I went, I have no idea. Only LG had any idea what, what was supposed to happen there. Man had a mind of his own. Certainly uh, better than it used to be because when I used to do panels for the old flight simulator, you had to do it, you had to compile it in C. Cool. Holy crap, I couldn't deal with that. Yeah, well, you had all these modules and you had to sort of build it up and then compile it and then test it out. And I gave up actually when XML files came in actually. <laughs> XML is the most dreadful thing for you, <laughs> I've ever thought it should be locked up. Should be banned. Well, I used to, uh, well, I used, I used to do a lot of panels for aircraft. I used to see uh, the gliding clubs. I did gliders and a couple of tugs and stuff. And. Uh, there was a, a, a milkman in Holland who was very good at programming and he used to correct my code when it didn't work. But he did all the flight co navigation computers you have on gliders and every function on the real one was modelled in his coding. Supposedly that's the way JSB sim, isn't it, Wardy? Say again? Isn't that the way JSB sim is supposed to be? Everything's there. JSB is quite weird. It, it, it's not far off in a UFO. It's a little turn right there. New GPS FMS heading three. Yeah, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. Three, four, six. Yeah, GSB sim is quite weird. I'm always freaking out about the people that think it's the superior way to make flight gear aircraft because it's not. It doesn't seem to be to me. Well, you, you can make it do whatever you want. A bit like you come with um, um, what's it? Not not the word nasal. Nasal, you can make an aircraft do whatever you want. It's a bit similar to that. But it's not really a flight flying model. I mean, Yarsin has to be fair. It's all basic and very old.
GPS FMS 346, still at 420 knots, 9,000 feet. That got us about uh, five minutes, five minutes and 30 seconds out of our next destination, next destination, which is uh, Kilo Mike uh, Foxtrot Romeo. A cool little town below us. Looks like there was must have been a contrail on the photo scenery. Yeah, that uh, going off to our right there. Yeah. yeah. Very weird. However, somebody was uh, doing sign writing low level. <laughs> That was a weird one, um, Voodoo. Um, this uh, politics podcast, uh, podcast I listened to on a Friday, they were talking about a friend Trump and they were spe speculating he might pull out. I, I can see that happening, but you never know. I, nothing would surprise me. I mean, absolutely nothing would surprise me. Why would he pull out? Because he, uh, if he's not winning, he doesn't want to be down, to, you know, to make out it's him. What they were saying is it'll make an excuse up like his elf is stop is making him pull out because he doesn't want to be seen to lose and and he doesn't want anybody else to get the victory, you know, like his vice president pick. Well, this is from somebody who worked for, with him for a year, so he knows what it's like. So, uh, another, another mind reader, yeah? <laughs> no, he well, it, it, it worked for him for a year before he got elected. Oh, yeah, he, so he's a qualified mind reader. No, he just, but everything he says about him, it, it, it pans out. Back in the day, decades ago actually um, used to work in the audio visual business and uh, would tech shows otherwise they'd have a thing where someone would hire the company I worked for to uh, set up all the microphones and all the audio visual equipment and all the, the stuff to go to the media um, for different big companies when they had shareholder meetings stockholder meetings blah 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 stuff like that so I, I have in the course of my career uh, been a technician at two shows that Trump Enterprises did and uh, spent like a week with the guy doing it. Not with him, but in the room and in the meetings where he was at and, you know, making sure all the shit worked. He's an interesting character. Yeah, he's uh, pretty unique, isn't he? an interesting word that unique yeah it's like when I tell people I I, I don't like the guy well you just isn't that no 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 I'm like the guy for 30 years so well I watched all the when they was president last time there was about at least six six different documentaries on six different channels and the, what they came out with on these programs, and it was very weird, weird, very weird background and upbringing and everything, and his his family as well. You know, his family origins and stuff. It's politics makes for weird bedfellows, man. I just don't. My whole question is, is where is this going? 
Hey, you know your airplane's upside down, bro. Huh? What TV program is sort of based in Medford? Sounds familiar. airport below we should have landed this one because we're too early. Keto Mike Foxtrot Romeo. Watch me for the turn. Anyway, we say five. Anyway, in England we have a, a series of riots going on every night. Really? What's that all about? Beginning at Wake, uh, some idiot broke into a kids' dance party and murdered three six-year-olds ah. and stabbed about six other people, put them in hospital. It was only 18, 17 year old. Uh, but uh, because this guy was black and uh, he was born in England, but it was his family's from uh, from Africa. So they're just using an excuse to have riots every night and set police cars on fire and burn down the police stations. That that crap only happened over here. Well, it's very familiar. The only difference is the uh, he, his kids stab these these little girls, and the people that try to stop him. At least he didn't have an M16 to uh, take out more, more people. people. Yeah, nobody had one to stop him either. Unbelievable. See, this is what I mean when I say, "Where is this going? What's gonna happen?" I don't quite know how they did actually stop him, but some of the adults intervened and got stabbed in the process. Oh, that... Would, yeah, that to stop insane. him killing any more of the little kids. One of the things that we did back when I used to teach swordsmanship, martial arts, is um, trained in Tanto Jutsu and used to teach people that stuff. And my teacher, the founder, asked one time we were at a seminar, he goes, Sensei Voodoo, how do you stop somebody, some guy comes in and starts doing this, just like you're talking about, stabbing people and blah, 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 and I said, take out a gun and shoot him or run? That's your two choices. He says, exactly. You can't take a stance, you can't deal with a guy with an edged weapon that's swinging wildly like that unless you're armed. There's nothing you can do. Well, it's like in that uh, Harrison Ford film, isn't it? The temp uh Raiders, Raiders have lost oh, out the ah. temple, oh, and this guy's wa waving a big bloody uh, sword around. He just pulls his pistol out and shoots him. What else are you gonna do, man? Um, we're gonna have to go around this mountain. I think this is Shasta, Mount Shasta. I'm gonna go to the right. It's like a volcano, don't it? All these are volcano were volcanoes at one time or another. Back on GPS FMS eight uh, seven degrees. Ooh, this is kind of cool with uh, orthographics. I remember when I flew this this before, it was just standard senior. It's kind of like, oh, I hope this looks good. Whoa. F4 showing off. You get some of that on the video. Why oh, somebody's flying that. Put a lot of work into that aircraft.
Why, why do you have such weird uh, airfield codes in America? I don't know. Most of the airfield codes are uh, like four digits, but you've got some that are like zero five B and stuff like that. I don't know what that's all about. Even when they got the four digits, you know, the K series, it got K, KB, and KAR. This is a bit of a big lake, isn't it? Yes, sir. No, I'm ashamed to say I don't know what it is. Upper Klamath Lake. Well, I'll have to better pronounce it than I could. Yeah, flight gear struggling with the cliffs on this edge, isn't it? It's not very well defined. Yeah, it's weird. I don't think it's got much attention. We're out in the boonies here, guys. New GPS FMS is uh, 18 or 16 degrees. I'm sorry. Descend to 7,000 feet on my mark. Maintain 420 knots. Mark descending to 7,000 feet. Here in a bit, we're going to set a course for the uh, beginning of the uh, runway, or for a vector so we can intercept the runway. And then we're going to go stupid sonic. We're going to go to uh, 900 feet AGL and we're going to go stupid sonic. 630 knots. But that's a bit off. Check fuel. I just hooked up with a tanker. Look at you! I can even I see it. Been. Stealth tanking. Yeah, you'd be out of juice. Well, I think with uh, this, if you were flying it in reality, you would have loads of tanks on it. F-35 even fuglier, according to Stuart. I was just watching a video here. Of, uh, I think it's an F-18 doing a supersonic pass on an aircraft carrier or a ship at sea. And, uh, it's like a like a flyby thing and the thing comes smoking in and even in the distance you see the shock cone around the aircraft like light up in the light and it's like what the hell's that and the thing drops a couple of uh, flares and just like boom goes flying past the the ship and you're like holy crap that's fast Yeah, one of them reels on Facebook of an air show, from an air show, it was a Puma display team and it was doing the flares all the time and it must have, must have sent out hundreds and hundreds of flares, different patterns and different times, because the display was about five minutes. Final destination Kilo Romeo Delta Mike. 11 minutes at this speed, but here in about six minutes, we're going to drop down on the deck and we're going to go fast. Just because I like to see those uh, 
the supersonic cones. Oh, I don't know if the Harriers can do that. Harriers can't go stupid Sonic, can they? Nope. Five hundred and forty five mile an hour. What's that? Top speed? Oh, no, sorry. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. The GR9 six, six hundred six hundred and sixty two yeah. mile an hour. Ah, so we can make it. Well, we're going to try it. You guys can't keep up. That's your own fault. <laughs> Get there eventually. What she said. <laughs> Get you there eventually. Six hundred knots, I think, is uh, probably most it's meant to do. But we can use a bit of air button as well at the same time. Use what? Accelerated time. guys that need to use it. Okay, we're going to adjust right to, uh, well, I don't know, let's fake it here, heading bug, uh, I'm at heading bug four degrees now. We're gonna go right about 20 degrees, so I'm gonna call it uh, 24 degrees. Two zero degrees. We'll go back to nine hundred or a thousand feet AGL mark. Be 
Average speed is 630 knots. Mark. And of course, my terrain following radar decides to go on vacation. Sonic booms over MP. Heading bug to zero degrees, I'm at 630 knots, 900 feet AGL, or 1,000 feet AGL, I'm sorry. No, I'm only managing about 500 knots. 543, 44. Ah, uh, you'll catch up when we get to the airport. Yep. What are you getting to do 50 more than me? I'm down to 32. Up or down? Yeah, ground speed's about 534. Yeah, I'm just off you at 3 o'clock or so. Yeah, I can see you on the map. Runway heading is 240 degrees. And there goes Flash. You haven't done the Flash thing today.
Eccentrically? Whoa, that's a big ass word, bro. Can't even pronounce it. He went for style. Oh, is that what he's saying? He went for the cool factor. Just like in California lowrider. <laughs> Not practical, but boy, does it look cool. <laughs> no ride. Low speed three zero zero knots, Mark. Not unless I can make up eight miles. Well, oh, is that how far behind you are? Oh my God, you yep. are. A four over shot. Oops. If we can't that worry. Oops. We can't this speed up for a bit longer. Can't turn, sure. turn left. GPS FMS two four zero degrees. Head for the runway. thing at 7,000 feet. Mark. 300 knots make our approach here to our final destination of uh, Kilo Romeo Delta Mike. Corner, so I might bump into you. <laughs> Pump the speed up to 450 or 420 knots. Running too late. GPS FMS 237 degrees, 420 knots, 7,000 feet. Thank you. I see green smoke. Yeah, that green, uh, toxic, the toxic green smoke really is uh, uh, the best visibility. It's like Stuart was opposed to doing that. He's like, ah, I don't want to put smoke on airplanes that don't have it. I go, oh, it's really going to help people on flight night. You can easily lose the lead um, when they, if they're below you against the scenery. I'm amazed at how close you can be and still not see another aircraft. I'm amazed. Makes you realize how, why there's collisions at times. There's an airplane right there. Where? I don't see him. Now I had some, uh, had some rain or some fog or some clouds or. to get us down into the vector a little better. Can 
left heading bug uh, 220. There we go. There we go. Speed 250 knots. Mark. Here's our runway. see the runway no <laughs> follow the green smoke remember what I said about getting out the runway end of the one ray we're going to turn right stay on the doohickey stay on the there's a big concrete thing up here try to stay on it does this airfield look distorted to you yes <laughs> it was it looks distraught to me Shit running around, it's like the real terrain is jumping up and down underneath of it. We're gonna go over here where it's not so jumpy and park. Well, there was a tree in the middle of the room where I just passed. Oh, somebody didn't land in. Ooh, you're going way too fast. See you later. See you next year. again. Flash is out there somewhere. I don't know if you'll have enough power to get out of there, Flash.
Number 66 going around. I'll be in right behind Eagle. That's where he's oh, headed. Oh, don't go there. Morty's got it figured out. Ah, don't get off the runway. <laughs> There's a tree in the middle of the uh, concrete as well. And this is one of those airfields where the ground hasn't been flat. You got it this time, November 66th. Got it. Ollie, how you doing? Oh, you're here. I'm to the, the left, left of you. Here. I see you. There you go. That javelin is its lights fixing. It's got two, two ice cream cones in front of Somebody else want next week, or am I gonna do? Am I gonna do it? I got this idea. We'll make Stuart's skin grow, but it'll be fine. All right, I got next week. Ah. Got across the yard. Careful with that, man. I tried that earlier, and I was like all sticking to the ground and stuff. Night Flash, thanks for coming, mate. Fancy pants. <laughs> Good night, Eagle. There we go, everybody's there. Yay! Well done, chickens. You always come home to roost. All right, Is I'm gonna kill, gonna kill the video. Say goodnight, YouTube. Good night, YouTube. Good night. Good night, YouTube.